The 1939 New York World's Fair opened on April 30 and covered 1,216 acres in Flushing Meadows, Corona Park, New York. Our project in the virtual world of Reaction Grid is to bring back parts of the fair as an educational tool for people of all ages to learn about and experience the building the world of tomorrow. It's nighttime as we start our tour. On the front of the administration building was the relief created by Albert Stewart entitled Miss Hannah. The artist's intent was to depict the spirit of the pharaoh unveiling the future. On the right is our first tour stand. Clicking the sign gives the visitor a text note card with information about the tour and what they are presently looking at. Next to it is the first educational note card. These give more information about a particular subject or display. Attached to every note card and tour signpost are audio buttons which reads the same text as on the note cards. The difference is that the note cards also contain reference sources. Our version of the administration building is attached to the zone walk, where a sampling of each zone of the fair is explained. Let's head on into the administration building to begin our tour. On display here are but some of the many posters that were created for the fair. Pick up a free and world t-shirt or touch to link to a website and purchase one of the real life world's fair books. Before we enter the zone walk, read or listen about the zoning of the fair. When you are ready, let's head into the zone walk for a look at the fair and its zones. Here is the story of the theme center and a model of the Trilon and Perisphere. Stop for a minute and listen to President Roosevelt's fair opening speech. I hereby dedicate the World's Fair, the New York World's Fair of 1939, and I declare it open to all mankind. The government zone was divided into three sections. The first section, which was spread over the entire zone, contained the buildings that were erected as standalone pavilions for the individual country. A few were constructed in other zones of the fair. Cuba was located in the amusement zone, Sweden and Turkey were in the food zone. The second section was centrally located around the Lagoon of Nations. There were seven groups of attached buildings collectively known as the Hall of Nations. Each of the buildings was divided into separate display halls that housed the displays and information for a particular country. The Court of States and the third section of the government zone. Here too, not all the exhibiting states were present. Florida was located in the amusement zone on the southwest side of Fountain Lake and New York owned the amphitheater on the lake's west side. The community interest focal display, the home furnishings building, was housed in a modern structure of classical design. The home furnishing building, whose is high colonnaded facade fronts on Bowling Green adjacent to the IRTBMT subway gate. Significant murals and sculptures adorn the exterior. On the main wall, behind the colonnade, a most unusual mural of ceramic glaze on metal, designed by J. Scott Williams, symbolized the broad theme of community interests, shelter, education, religion, recreation, and art. The food focal display was located in food building number 3, Food South, on Agricultural Row. Distinctive features of the rhomboidal structure were four tall golden shafts resembling stalks of wheat, and, on the facade facing Lincoln Square, White told Gordon's mural depicting food as a source of energy and health. The message for the communication zone was, modern civilization is based upon man's ability to receive knowledge, sentiments, ideas whether from his contemporaries or from the wisdom of the ages. The world of tomorrow will largely be shaped by his ability, as well as his desire, to communicate the best of his knowledge, his thoughts, his aspirations to his fellow men and to posterity. Stressing the increasing interdependence of peoples the world over, the production and distribution zone was devoted primarily to industries whose task it was to transform natural resources into commodities necessary to the daily life of whole populations. Its story enables you to understand, in some measure, the complexities of our modern industrial structure by illustrating the various steps involved in solving the problems of supply and demand. Situated southwest of the Grand Central Parkway extension and linked to the main ferry grounds by the Bridge of Wheels and the Bridge of Wings, 
the transportation zone was devoted to many of the extraordinary inventions which enabled man to conquer time and space. The amusement zone surrounded Fountain Lake and contained a seeming mishmash of privately sponsored displays. Since the successful midway of Chicago's Columbian Exposition in 1893, world fairs normally included a separate area of exhibits not necessarily meant for educational purposes but pure enjoyment. In World on Reaction Grid you can visit the Belgian Pavilion, Building of the City of New York, Westinghouse Electric, or the Trilon and Perisphere. More videos about the project will be coming soon.